It's crazy how crazy life is. It's interesting when you think about the life that you live, the surprises that come up in your life, the trials, the temptations, the time that flies by. Sometimes we may find ourselves needing to be renewed. We may find our fire dimming, our spirit weakening. Restore my spirit, Lord. It needs restored. Revive the fire, Lord, deep in my bone. Renew my courage, Lord. I don't know about you, but if I can be honest with everybody here, sometimes life happens so quickly and in such a crazy fashion that it seems like I catch myself just simply going through the motions sometimes. <laughs> I find myself going through the motions on Sunday morning. I find myself waking up habitually driving to the work or driving to work going through the motion i find myself loving my wife and my children simply going through the motion maybe taking things for granted that i've been blessed with and maybe if you're like me your spiritual walk is simply something that you're just going through the motion you know a lot's happened I can think of the time that we've been here. Three and a half years in Paducah. And what's happened in those three and a half years. But think of your life. I don't know if it's the season of life that I'm in. I don't know if it's just a time of reflection. I don't know if I'm beginning a midlife crisis. I don't know, but it seems like in my life, there's been a lot of time lately for reflection, regret, not much peace in my mind because life happened. In Job, we're introduced to a character that in Job chapter one and verse one, if up on the screen to my right and to my left, is described as a man that is blameless, upright, one who fears God and turns away from evil. You know, I would love my tombstone one day to reflect that. I try my best to make that happen. And I know that God looks down on me and I hope he looks down on me and sees me as this person. But sometimes I lose sight because life. We know as the course of Job chapter 1 runs out and Satan then goes and attacks Job. After receiving God's permission. And takes everything from him. In the very end of Job, Job's demeanor doesn't change in chapter 1. In chapter 1 and verse 20 the text says, and then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground in worship. And he said, naked I come from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all of this, up until into this point, through the taking of all of the things that he had, Job, the text says, did not sin or charge God with wrong. Oftentimes, I think when we think of the book of Job, we think of all the tragedy that took place physically and materially. And that is definitely something that happens in our life, doesn't it? Material things are taken. But something else is taken from Job. 
Throughout the course of Job, we see a change in Job. We see one after his friends come to him, after his wife betrays him. Starting really in chapter 3, we see a change in Job. Life has happened. We see Job fall apart and wonder why and question God to a point of he believes he must repent. And if we can really honestly evaluate our life, we may not have had everything taken away from us like Job has had, but maybe life has happened and distractions have come and your fire is dimming and your courage needs to be renewed and we're just simply going through the motions of life and it's time to be renewed. It's time to reevaluate our life and say, why are you here this morning? Are you here this morning because of your deep, intimate love of God? Why have you spoken or not spoken to your neighbor about the love of Christ? About his death, about his burial, and about his resurrection? Maybe there's a family member at home or on the phone that needs the gospel and you have the answers. But maybe timidity has come over us and it's time now to reevaluate, to renew our life and to reestablish a relationship with God that says, I'm here for a purpose. It's time to renew. In chapter 38 of, of Job, something changes in about chapter 32 and Elihu comes into the picture. And Elihu comes to Job and he's angered with Job. And in chapter 32, I I think it's verse 2. I meant to write it down and I didn't. And some of us don't have a still trap of a brain like Dan, so I'm going to look it up real fast. I got to get my digs in when I can. Chapter 32. He says in verse 3, And he burned with anger. Also at Job. But in verse 2, he says he justified, or Job justified himself rather than God. Does that sound like the Job of Job chapter 1 and verse 1? The blameless, upright, God fearing man? Now, he still is a God fearing man, but what has happened? Life has happened, pressures have happened. And Elihu comes in and says, Job, Straighten up and fly right. Because you know better than this, Job. You know God. You know who he is. And from that point forward, Elihu lays into Job. And I'm going to tell you this morning, maybe sometimes we need to be laid into. We need to be straightened up. We need to have that self-reflection, that realization and say, why am I here? Why are you here, church? Why do we live in this world? Please self? To please God? To glorify self or to glorify God? And it's my encouragement, it's my charge that it has been for me this week as I've gone through this and it is for you this morning that it's time to renew first and foremost our mindset. Regain focus. Listen, we've had a lot of distractions that has caused us to lose focus of our priorities. The church has had distractions that has caused us to lose focus, the wrong mindset of our priorities as the church. It's time to renew our mindset. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, he tells us what? To be transformed by the renewal of your mind, as Paul encourages them, in contrasting with being molded by the world, being versus molded by the scripture. A renewal of mind, a metamorphosis, if you will. It's a change. It's a self-reflection that says, am I just simply going through the motions Have I really realized what I just did in remembering the Lord's Supper as I opened that cup and took the bread and drank that juice? Or am I just going through it? Am I living as a godly husband? 
to my wife that God has blessed me with so richly? Really appreciating, or do I take her for granted? She's always there. Yes, she's always there. Do I realize the blessing I have in my children? No, they're not perfect. But man, they're a blessing to me. Do I look around at my church family and maybe mimic the same words? No, they're not perfect. But man, they're a blessing to me. Renew my mindset. Change it, transform it. Because what I have found is in life, oftentimes, we're molded to what we hear, see every day, and that's the world. We're molded to begin thinking the way the world thinks. And we begin uh, wondering what the world wonders. And we begin going back to those principles of the world. And Paul here says, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Go back to what you know, and that's God. So you can know what God's will is for you. Do we know what God's will is for us? Do we know what the purpose of the church is? Do we know and do we understand that we have a grave responsibility to go into the world and simply not just go through the motions of life, but to bring souls to Christ? Church, it's time to renew our mindset be refocused, recentered, not molded by the world, but molded by the scripture. Molded by God's will, not by selfish desire. Because there's a lot of things that come in my mind that distract me from God's mindset. I begin trusting in myself and leaning on my own understanding. We see Solomon dealt with this in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. I may not have the trust in God, but man, I sure trust in my own abilities. I trust in my own ways. And maybe that is ways that the church has failed today. Trusting in themselves as opposed to trusting in God. Trusting in their own mission, in their own focus. And instead of trusting in God's mission... In God's focus, it's time to renew our mind. Not only is it time to renew our mind, but it's time to renew our desire for God to know our ways. I believe, most of us here believe, God is all-knowing. David believed God is all-knowing. But in Psalm 139, David still spoke these words as he prayed to God, Search me, O God, know my heart, know my ways, know my words. When is the last time you prayed that prayer? Are we brave enough to pray that prayer? Do we truly desire God's ways to be done in our life? Are we truly able to be transparent enough to profess to our God who we know sees everything? God, watch me. Not only watch how I walk physically, but watch my heart. Do we really believe we can hide? If you think about what happened in Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 10, remember what happens? Adam and Eve are walking through the garden and they hear what? God. And they hid. You know, it's amazing to me as we know, I know, that God knows everything. But I believe in my mind sometimes that if I'm the only one in the room, nobody else knows it's happening. Nobody else sees me do it. It didn't really happen. If a tree falls in a forest, right, does it make a noise if there's nobody there to hear it? I know God knows me, but it's time for me to renew my desire for God to search me. An open invitation, if you will, as the prayer prayers that praise that prayer 
for God to watch his heart. It may be time in your mind, in your life, for you to search your heart, for you to really ask God to search your ways, to know you. Not only is it time that we look at this idea of renewing our mindset. It's not only time for us to renew our desire for God to search our ways, but it's time to renew our strength, or rather the strength that's found only in God. And maybe when I think about these three points, maybe Jed and I were talking about it this morning. I'm still trying to figure this out also. And I realize, I think, the reason I'm having this hard time to figure this out is because I don't get out of the way. I'm still trying to function. I'm still trying to make it happen. I'm still trying to make it better. I, 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 when in time, I need to see to take a step back, be in submission to God and say, God, you renew me. You renew my desire. Let your spirit work in me. Know my ways. Know my heart. Give me strength that only you can provide. I don't know. I don't know if it's one of those things that how I grew up and telling myself that you have to do it. Taking the pride of not asking for help. Maybe some of you are sitting in the same boat. Being taught to really dig deep and to do it. And maybe in being taught that, we've forgotten to submit ourselves to God and say, God, you give me your strength. In Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 10, he says, you were tired out by the length of your road. Yet you did not say it was hopeless. You found renewed strength. Therefore, you did not faint. Life is an endurance race. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And maybe that's where I'm at in my life. I've been sprinting up until this point and I'm tired. I don't mean to take a step back and allow God to renew me. Relight that fire, Lord, deep in my heart. Renew my courage. Renew my purpose, my mindset, my understanding. I want to be like Jeremiah again. With this fire deep inside me. That I have to give it to somebody. I want to be the dad that God wants me to be. Not a self-focused, self-centered father. But one who wants nothing more than to get them to heaven. And I want them to be able to watch me as a dad and see God through me and through my example. I need to be renewed in my mindset. I need to be renewed in my desire for God to search me. I need to be renewed in my strength, realizing that my strength is only through God. In Isaiah 40, He says this in verse 31. Those that wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Why? Well, verse 28 and verse 29 tells us. Because their strength is in God. Is your strength in God this morning? 
Are you allowing God to work in your life to move you, to mold you, to transform you into his vessel? To do the things he wants to do with you? As Job's life happened. Luckily, Job had an Elihu. And maybe that's who you are to somebody this morning. Is there a lie who? Somebody to set them up straight and say, listen, you know better. You know. But in chapter 42, we truly see a renewal of Job. Job at that moment, in that time, through God's responses, through Elihu's anger, through his charge, Job says, okay, you're right, God. I'll shut my mouth now. I'll stop justifying me, justifying you. You see, we always go and turn to the end of chapter 42, where Job's material things are restored. But something else was renewed with Job. Job went back to that man in Job 1.1 who was blameless, upright, fearing God, realizing how small he really is. Maybe this morning it's time for us to realize how small we really are in the scheme of things. To surrender ourselves to God. To allow his spirit to work in us and his fruits to overflow out of us. Renew my spirit, Lord. For it needs renew. Revive that fire, Lord, deep in my bones. Stir my desire to work in your fold. Renew my courage, Lord. It needs renewed. I hope this morning we can look at ourselves and honestly ask ourselves, are we simply going through the motions of life? And if so, maybe it's time to be renewed for that fire to be lit back in us again. If there's somebody here this morning who needs to respond to the open invitation of the gospel, if you truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he lived, died, was buried, and rose on that third day, if you believe in your mind that he is king in your life and you need to repent of sin, now is time to do that. Maybe that's your renewal this morning. Maybe it's something different. Maybe it doesn't involve coming forward this morning, but maybe it means grabbing a brother or sister on the way out and making something right. Maybe it means the invitation is this morning for you to evaluate your life and say, do I need to renew my strength in God? Renew my desire for him to search my ways. Do I need to renew my mindset, my trust in God? Whatever and wherever you are this morning, let's stand together and sing as we renew our minds. Shout to the Lord.